if we didn't thin out, we would end up with a lot of fruit, but it would be a lot of small fruit. Seven fruit there with more flowering coming. So what would we remove? Doing this is not a bad job. Raining again. Welcome to the monsoon. Can you not go back to work? <laughs> I would be struggling to fit some of these in one box, I reckon. Can you see the little brown stripy chick just round his legs? So we haven't actually finished doing the, pruning the jackfruits, but by all accounts, the monsoon trough is coming in t tomorrow. Uh, and there's them for a few days, so which will mean a lot of rain. And I don't particularly like leaving all the prunings on the ground. Left too long, the, the leaves can sort of um, smother the grass and kill off the grass and yeah. So, change of plan now. We're into the, or well, I am into the canistels. They'll need pruning, but, we're, but they'll also need pruning out. Some people will say, why thin out the fruit? You've got a lot of fruit on the tree. Because the tree basically is 2.2 meters tall. Individually, they're not big trees. So they won't carry a lot of fruit to a big, good, filled out size. If we didn't thin out, we would end up with a lot of fruit, but it would be a lot of small fruit with not much flesh recovery, given that there's a seed inside as well. The one, two, three, and two there. One, two, three, four there. Do you see what I mean? We And more flowering coming. We would end up with a heck of a lot of fruit on the tree. Uh, some of that fruit would be big, and some of that fruit would be medium, and some would be small and too small for what we would want to send away. So then what do we do with that fruit? It's not viable to send away, not fair on the customer because you want them to get plenty of um, flesh inside the fruit. We would end up having to bury the fruit because if there's one thing that I really don't like is when some farmers will just dump fruit in the paddock that's just going to attract rats it will attract pigs where we are pigs will come in potentially disease so rather than go through all the rigmarole of um, digging a hole and burying the fruit we thin out so we we each year we try and a little bit of slightly different um, volumes of fruit on a, left on a tree and the fertilizer and, or timing of the fertilizer. Ti timing of the fertilizer is as important, I, I would say, as how, mi how much fertilizer you put out. There is the top wire. So all of that is excess growth, which will come off. When we take that off, that removes any shading to those fruit that might be high up. And what will happen with a lot of trop tropical fruit trees is the fruit, if it's not protected by the foliage, it will get sunburn. Pretty much all tropical fruit trees are evergreen, which is why what has happened with some people when they've over pruned them, leaving no foliage, the actual branches end up getting sunburnt and the bark cracks and then the trees or the branches start to die back. Seen that happen big time with Salsop. Somebody pretty much destroyed their trees through over pruning. So I will remove excess fruit and then I will go back around and count how many fruit we've got. Uh, I think this year we've decided on, we'll probably be looking at leaving 30 fruit per tree, established tree that is. 
under than on a smallest tree and remove any of the fruit that's high up because that potentially will get sunburnt anyway and then when that's done I've got to come through and prune and that's the job probably for about four days maybe longer and another thing I'm really curious about is if we remove a lot of the excess fruit be fairly rigid on how much how many fruit we leave on will that help the flowering that's going to happen now which will be picking in say June July so will it give us a bigger winter crop there isn't as much variety of um, winter crops certainly in terms of the tropical fruit side of things so be interesting if we can encourage more of a winter crop so I believe if you put the camera up like this it makes you look thinner hmm I must try that in terms of uh, which fruit we look at removing now then on the end of here we've got seven fruit there with more flowering coming so what would we remove well we'd look at first of all if there's any misshapen fruit and we'd remove shape that's uh, fruit that's misshapen we'd then look at fruit that's at the very very end of the branch is more likely to be exposed to sun the sun and get burnt so get rid of the stuff at the end and then let's say we left with these two here the fruit that's underneath has more potential to be shaded by the foliage so I'd get rid of that one so we we've gone from se seven down to one it's underneath it's not out at the extreme there where it can get burnt it looks a good shape and that's the that's our thinking anyway whether it's right or not who knows we we do try and do these little experiments we keep quite a a strict record in how much fertilizer we're putting out and then measure that against what we physically harvest well not just what we harvest in terms of the canister but on the sizes as well like we prefer to pack a box of say 16 big ones than 20 medium ones if we can uh, you're dealing with mother nature so nothing is perfect but you try your best so here we've got four five so we're going to remove the ones that are on top that have that potential to get sunburnt We're going to remove that smallest one, then we've got two of an equal size. And I'm going to leave the one that's on the underneath that will get protected by the foliage. Less risk of sunburn. It's a similar thing that we do with the jackfruits as well. Um, because again, we keep our trees small, there's no way that they can carry 20, 30 fruit. Uh, well, they could, they could, but the fruit themselves wouldn't be full um, stretched and what have you again we leave them for a little while to see that they're well pollinated especially with the jackfruit because you can end up with quite misshapen jackfruits if uh, it's not evenly pollinated leave them till they're probably I don't know maybe a kilo in weight 20 centimeters long something like that to just try and ensure that um, they're well pollinated and with the canistels here and if we didn't thin out to be honest the trees will if you leave too many fruitlets on the trees will shed them anyway so you might as well in our our heads anyway you might as well go around and pick the ones that you want than risk them shedding ones that were in a really good position and leaving fruit that's then going to be exposed to sun or whatever it might be 
it's a job for this time of the year anyway. It's hot and sticky. I'm here between the trees, so I'm shaded somewhat from the sunshine. Doing this is not a bad job. And I've spent 20 minutes so far doing it. Uh, and I'm halfway through this. So 20, 40, just over an hour to do a trellis that's uh, 40 meters long, say. That's both sides. Um, then there's a pruning on top, obviously. One of the things that we are noticing with the um, trellising, this is canistel. And I pruned them two months ago. I'm going to say that this is two meters worth of growth in two months. I wouldn't class uh, canistels as being a really vigorous tree. Um, our freestanding tree is fairly calm, to be honest. And in fairness, down the sides of these trellises, it is fairly calm, but at the top, yeah, really, really vigorous. So, a metre per month, that's a lot of growth. So, that there is the top wire, which is 2, 2.2 2 metres above ground level. Theoretically, you should only be 20, 30 centimetres above that top wire at any one time. But as you can appreciate, that would be really difficult to maintain. You'd be pruning, if not on a weekly basis, you'd be pruning every two weeks. That sort of uh, intensity of pruning is um, realistically not feasible. Going in this, what is classed as a two-dimensional tree. So two-dimensional as in you are supposed to be able to stand here and reach through and prune there. So let's say half a metre wide. But by doing that, then the top just takes off. When thinning out fruit, don't wear shirts with pockets. This happened yesterday as well. Pockets full of uh, fruit. So I'm going to have lunch. This little chap here has come to greet me. Oh, He hasn't been out all morning because it's raining and he doesn't like the rain. Do you? Hmm? Strangely enough. I know. More beautiful jackfruits to send off to market. We got some really big ones this pick. Really good size jackfruits. So just giving them a rinse off in the tub. And then they'll go off to dry. And then into the cold room. We'll be struggling to fit some of these in one box, I reckon. Yeah, it's a length as much as anything, isn't it? Yeah, there's some big duties there. And once again, we are like little drowned rats. You made me go out in the rain. Welcome to the monsoon. Can you not go back to work? <laughs> hey. Raining again. Yeah, 10 days of rain. So we are up to this morning, I think 700 millimeters thereabouts. This just so just justifies putting this uh, extension in. The truck, we can have the trailer out here, it's in the dry. We, we could load the trailer in the shed before, but it's quite awkward going in and out of the shed and not as much room. Got plenty of room to get around here, load. So that's what I'm doing today. Weighing out the jackfruits, boxing them up, labels, double wrapping the boxes, <laughs> double wrapping them for when I go into town. 
trying my best to keep the boxes as dry as possible. Okay, let's get on. Oh dear. We seem to have a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, kind of twisted the box a little bit, but at least it's um, below the line of the top of the box. Just about. We have there a cassowary dad with a very, very young chick. Can you see the little brown stripy chick just round his legs? So good to see. Got to be very, very careful around them. Um, keep very still if the chickens are around because dad is ultra protective. 